Hello everyone, Heath Adams here, aka Maverick, and today I wanted to do a walkthrough for the Hack the Box Machine Sunday. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead now and just pull up our Nmap scan to save some time. If we look here at the Nmap scan, we can see that a few interesting ports are open. So if we see that we have port 79, which is the finger port, and we've got SSH sitting over here on a high port, 22022. Um, so those are interesting. We also have RPC bind at 111, and then we have a couple of closed higher ports that showed up in a previous scan but aren't showing up anymore. So immediately what stands out to me in the scan here is your finger port and your SSH port. So the finger service is a user information service. Basically what this does is allows you to see some information about users that are logged in. Um, if we look here, we can actually already see a user that's logged in. That user is Sunny. Um, so right away, right off the bat, we've got user enumeration here and we've got a username of Sunny. Uh, so we've got this SSH here and what I like to do when I'm looking at SSH is I like to see, first of all, if this service is vulnerable, any kind of exploits out there, and then we'll move on to password attacks if not. So a couple things I wanted to show you before we get into the attacks is we can do a little bit of further enumeration. Uh, we do have this finger port here and there is actually a uh, module with Metasploit that will allow us to enumerate that further. So let's go ahead and get into MSF console Okay, and now we'll search for finger because I can never remember a module to save my life. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So we've got the finger users here, which always makes me chuckle a little bit. So let's finger some users. So we'll say use auxiliary scanner finger finger users. Uh, we'll show options here. Okay, so port 79, everything looks good. We just gotta set the host. So we'll set our host here of 10, 10, 10, 76, and we'll say run. Okay, and it pulls back a bunch of users here. So this is a good list to have um, just in case, but we're gonna go ahead and start with Sunny. I just wanted to show this in case you ever ran into a finger port, um, it would be useful to you to not just go off what's on the uh, the Nmap scan, but to also look at what other users you can find with that finger server. So in terms of SSH, uh, the first thing I do like to do is I like to enumerate this Sun SSH. Um, I'll either Google it or I'll, let's exit out of here and we'll just say search exploit. Is there anything for Sun SSH? And SearchPoint says no. So I'm not gonna take it any farther. Um, if I was doing hacking in real time, I would go do a little bit of Googling, but the exploit is not here. I just wanted to show that as a step in my enumeration. Um, so let's go ahead and actually try to log in here with Sunny and we'll see what this looks like. So I first did a Sunny, uh, SSH for Sunny at the IP address. And then we have to identify the higher port because by default it's 22. And you'll see that we get this uh, no matching key exchange found. So if you ever see this, you can add a tack on here that looks something like this. And then you would just give one of the keys that they asked for. So we'll do the Diffie Hellman group. and hit enter. Sorry, this is an O, not a zero. Okay, so here, um, we have a couple of options, right? We can do a brute force attack uh, with a password list, or we can do a password guessing attack. Now, typically on capture the flag type machines, a lower level user doesn't have that complicated of a password. Um, and a brute force attack will take a long time. So we can definitely do a brute force attack, but I always start with a password guessing attack. And what I like to guess on is 
uh, I'll guess the username. I'll guess like, so I'm looking at maybe Sunny. I'm looking at Sun, Sun SSH, uh, Solaris, something along those lines that maybe would let us in. Um, also trying password one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, just the basic things. If those don't get me in, um, then I will move on to a, a brute force attack. But the password that works is the name of the machine, which is Sunday. So we type in Sunday and we get it. So immediately I'll LS, um, I'll look around and we've got this lower user. So I'll go to the desktop and LS there and expect to see a users.txt for our flag, but we do not have a flag here. So this is not the lower level user that we need to be. Um, so what we can do is we can look around. Uh, we could see, like for example, if we're part of the sudoers, um, I always try to switch a user and I'll type in Sunday here. You'll see we're not. A uh, useful trick is to say sudo-l. <laughs> so the only command that we have here is something called troll. Um, I would say that we probably don't want to dig too deep into this. So what I would do here is I would start looking around first. Um, I think it's very important to enumerate and that's where a lot of people get lost is in the enumeration process. Uh, we should see what files and folders that we have access to and then if we get stuck we can use something like linenum uh, or we can use Linux priv checker .py, uh, something along those lines that may give us a little nudge somewhere else but I always like to do it manually first. Um, so I would first ls the home folder here, the, the main directory here, and look through these, these folders. Um, one that stands out to me immediately and that I would always look up is this backup folder right here. Um, anything in a backup folder could be useful to us. So let's go ahead and just ls what's in that backup folder. Okay, so we've got agent22.backup. This index.html wasn't here when I first looked, so somebody's kid put that there. Uh, and then we've got shadow.backup. So uh, let's go ahead and try to cat these out and see what we can find. If we do agent22, you're gonna see we get permission denied, so we don't have access to that. But the shadow file, we actually do have access to. Now the root isn't in here, uh, but if we look through, we actually find another user here named Sammy. And we've got Sammy's hash. So I'm going to pause here for a second. If you're new to hacking, um, a shadow file is where the hashes are stored. So typically on a machine, you could cat Etsy password, and that's where your users are stored. And then you can try to cat Etsy shadow, but usually the root and the sudoers have access to this, and regular users will not. So you see that we got permission denied, but somebody put a backup of the shadow file in this folder. So we do have access to a user hash here. So we're, we're gonna have to crack this hash. Uh, there's a couple of options that we can do now. We can take the hash and we can do something called unshadow. Uh, it's a tool that we take the password file and we take the shadow file and we uh, this tool will combine them together and then you run it through something like John the Ripper with a password list and try to crack it. Um, I'm lazy so I don't even do that. What I do is I just look at the hash here. And if you look at this first initial hash, uh, you see dollar sign five dollar sign. That tells you what type of hash it is. Now a dollar sign five is a SHA-256. If you're looking at uh, dollar sign six, you'd be looking at SHA-512. Um, so knowing what I know here, I can actually just run this through Hashcat with the appropriate settings. Um, so I went ahead and did that. I'm not going to force you into that. I'm just going to show you what that will look like. So let me pull a picture over here. Um, so if we have our picture here, you can see that I'm running Hashcat64. This is on my password cracking machine. I'm running on my laptop here. Um, the M7400 that is for our SHA-256. And then I'm just using the shadow file here uh, and then the rockyou.txt password list. And it goes ahead and it says starting and then we'll tab over. And you'll see it runs through all of these. It's doing SHA-256 crypt here. You see the dollar sign five dollar sign. It picks up the hash type. And I'm putting the hash target in that we found. 
Uh, eventually it runs through this list and it comes back and says, hey, cool dude, exclamation, that's your password. Okay, so let's go ahead and give that a try. Let's exit out of this. We'll just tab up here and we'll replace Sunny with Sammy. And we'll just say, cool dude, exclamation. Okay, so we have another user here. We've established two users. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can LS on the desktop. And if there's a user's file, there is, awesome. So let's cat that user file actually. Okay, and this is our first flag. This is our user flag. So we're in the right place. Um, again, what, what I do here is I repeat the process, right? Because a different user might have different privileges. So if we look, uh, we'll say sudo su again to try to switch to root. Cool dude. Nope. Uh, we can say sudo dash L to see what we have. Okay, so we have something different here. We have wget, um, <laughs> which off on first glance, we say, well, what does this do for us? Because we can wget as a user and pull stuff down right now if we wanted to. Uh, we can move to a temp folder and do that. So what does running wget as a root do for us? Well, there's a, actually a cool trick that we can do with it that allows us to send files out. So what that might look like is actually setting up a listener with netcat on our machine and then using wget to send that over. Um, so this is actually a cool trick I didn't know. Uh, when it came to wget, I had to read the man file. Uh, so let's take a look at what that might look like. I'm gonna actually open another window here and I'll make this bigger. Okay, so let's set up a listener. I'm going to set this up on 8081. Okay, we're listening. So here, we're going to say sudo, and we're going to say wget. And then the syntax we're looking for is something called post-file equals. So now we can send over what we want, right? We can say Etsy shadow, and we can get the real shadow file. I believe my IP address is 14.12. I am not sure. I'm going to double check this before I send it because your IP definitely changes on the VPN. Um, 14.12 right here, okay. So let me go ahead and hit send on this. Okay, and if we look over here, we actually get a post HTTP sent to us. So it sends us over the shadow file. And you see here we have the root, it's also a SHA-256. Uh, we also have the Sammy and Sunny files as well. That's great, we could take this now, we can go try to crack this. Who knows what the password for root is? It could be something complicated and I'm lazy. Since this is a capture the flag and not a you need to get root, um, I'm gonna take the lazy way out. So we'll do netcat again. And typically, uh, the root.txt flag is stored on the uh, root desktop, which would look something, I think, uh, like this, root.txt. You may also see something like this. Um, so if we go ahead and send this root root.txt, we hit enter, you see it's connected, awaiting response. And then you see we get this hash here. Okay, so now we've gotten both hashes. We are uh, officially done with the event. I do wanna say some things closing out though. Um, I was reading through the forms and I like to go there and help people out uh, when they're having some issues, but a lot of people were struggling with enumeration on this machine. A couple things that they were struggling with. They're saying, hey, I scanned the box and I only saw port 79 open, or port 79 and 111. I'm not seeing anything else. Okay, well your issue here is you're scanning top 100, top 1000 ports, and you're not scanning all ports. So remember that when you scan, you're gonna always wanna type in dash p dash. Um, what I like to do is I like to stage my scans where I scan with a fast scan and just pick up all the ports that are open, 
and then I'll scan with the dash A, dash capital A on the ports that it found. So it makes it go so much faster. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is, is looking for interesting files. A lot of people are having uh, problems with Privesk and a lot of Privesk is enumeration. Um, sure, there's chances that you can run the Linux PrivChecker.py and find some kind of service or something funny that's running. Uh, but more chances are that you're going to find an interesting file or an interesting program or something on the back end, like this, this folder with the backup folder. That's really common in Capture the Flag events. Um, some of the more complicated ones, obviously, they get a little more, more complex. But on something like this, it, you're just doing basic enumeration, and I feel like that's where a lot of beginners struggle. Uh, so making sure that you enumerate, you look around, and just train your eyes to see what isn't normal, what what a Linux file system should look like, and then what you're seeing. And that just takes a lot of practice, but that's some things I would recommend getting used to. This uh, this event did teach me about this trick with the, the wget. I had no idea that you can send the file out until I read the man pages. So if you do find something interesting like this, um, think through it, think what you want to achieve, and then see if you can achieve that either through Google or through the man pages and it becomes a lot easier. So that's really it for this video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Please subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.